Hello friends! Today I am going to walk through a couple different methods to use my newest brush set, the Flower Builder Kit for Procreate. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description below, and if you've already gotten these brushes, I just want to say a huge thank you for all of your support, and I really hope that you find them useful and learn a lot by using them. Alright, let's get into the project! When you download the pack, there are three separate brush sets. The partial ones, which are clusters of three to five petals that you can use as a starting point. There are individual petals, and then there are full already drawn flowers that you can use to supplement the flowers that you build. And all of this is to help speed up your workflow. Now, before we get too far, I'm gonna show you, I have the set comes with a PDF guide that walks you through these starting steps as well. And the big thing I wanna talk through first is the positioning and labeling of the petals, the individual petal brushes. Everything has, you'll see a time at the end of the brush name for all of these individual petals. And I should say first that this is definitely just a suggestion. It's the position that they were originally drawn in. That does not mean that they have to stay at this position when you use them, but it is a useful guide for you to use as reference. The goal of this brush pack is to help, especially when drawing flowers in a variety of perspectives and positions. So while there are plenty of these top-down petals, the pack also has a lot of more foreshortened and curled ones. Using the clock position indicators then, if you are drawing a flower from the top down, you might choose more petals like these ones on the left that are flatter and more elongated. But if you're drawing a tilted flower or something from say a side angle, then we would also tilt our imaginary clock face accordingly and then select more of these foreshortened and curled petals for this different perspective. Oh my gosh, you're fine. Okay, no sir, no thank you. Cool, okay. So definitely have a look through the PDF guide. The pages are super long, so you can view it in side-by-side -side mode. This is something to keep in mind, but these are not hard and fast rules. They are just suggestions. So jumping into the actual brushes, I wanna show you first how to build from a partial, and then I'll show you how to work from the individual petals themselves. So starting with this partial long petals slight side view brush, I'm gonna show you how to use this one because these are sort of a tilted three quarter view. So you can see already there's a lot of foreshortening in this six o'clock petal here, and we have some curvature here. Now, one way that you could use this is stamp the partial one on one layer, add a new layer, and then find another partial stamp to use on top. And then use the transform tool to position this. And these petals have a little more edge texture than the first partial stamp that I used, but we can trace over that in our final line work. So that's one option. Another option is to use individual petals. So again, I'm working on a new layer above the layer that has the stamp and working in my individual petals brush set, I'm going to look at the spaces that I need to fill. So I have roughly a 130, 430, 730, and 1030 positioning. And with that, said, the biggest things I'm looking for are two more for shortened petals to go in these spaces and then some slightly more elongated petals to go in these two spaces. And you can certainly add more or less than four, depends on what kind of flower you're drawing. That's what I'm going for for the first layer. If I wanted to add more petals after that for a multi-layered like cone flower or a daisy or something like that, I would fill out the gaps that I have here and then go back in and add more. Right away, what's catching my eye is this wavy foreshortened 430. I think that that will fit well in this space. So I'm tapping once on my new empty layer and then I'm gonna grab the transform tool and position this. And I think it's a little large overall, so I'm going to scale it down slightly, but then I'm also I'm gonna rotate this a little bit and then I'm gonna tap the distort option and zooming in here so you can see better. I am just going to play a little bit with the perspective, so skewing from the corners. And then I'm going to add a new layer and fill in my next spot. So for my next one, if I scroll all the way down, there are more skinnier petals on the bottom of the set, and there's these 
dividers with them. And I like this 130 here. I'm gonna tap on my empty layer and grab the transform tool. And I'm gonna switch this back to uniform so that I can adjust everything proportionately. And then I'm going to decrease the size just a little bit. And then I'm gonna tap warp. And with this, I'm just going to curve this petal a little bit by grabbing in the middle. You can also grab the advanced mesh and move individual nodes, but for the general warp that I'm gonna do, I'm just grabbing in the middle and dragging down. And then I'm gonna release it and add a new layer. This curled torn 630 one, I'm going to try for this spot here. We'll see how it works. Some of this is definitely trial and error of seeing what works in the space. This one, I definitely need to rotate this. And I think I also just need to go ahead and make this shorter because this is maybe not quite as foreshortened as this one. It looks a little weird. Um, so I'm gonna go to distort and move this corner down a bit. Don't worry about the overlaps, we will erase those later. Now for my empty space up here, I'm adding a new layer and I'm gonna try this concave crumpled 10 o'clock brush. Tapping once on my empty layer and I'm going to rotate this quite a bit and then automatically just going in to skew. Okay, and now I want to erase my overlap here. And this is a rare one. Most of the times there are actually more overlaps, especially when you start to build peonies and roses. But for this, I just have this one overlap. So what I have to do is decide which petal I want to be on top and then erase the under petal one. And so for this, I want this um, slightly torn petal, oops, a slightly torn petal to be on top. And so I will go into the layer that has this, which is my bottom layer with the four petals. You can see if I hide it and show it. That's the one that I am going to erase from. So I move down to that layer, grab my eraser, and I'm just going to erase this line where it overlaps there. So now here are the two different flowers that we've built. Because they were created from the same initial base stamp, I'm going to do a couple things to make them look less similar. And I'm gonna do these things to the first one that we built with the two partial stamps. So first I am tapping the transform tool and I'm gonna flip it horizontally and then rotate this slightly. And then I wanna show how you can easily manipulate the petal shapes and this will help differentiate it even more. So in the adjustments menu, I am selecting the liquify tool. Right now I have this set on push and I'm gonna decrease my brush size so that I can then use this to add edge texture to these petals. So I'm just using the brush to push in these little bumps and create this edge texture. Liquify is a great tool for doing this because it allows you to super easily manipulate the shapes. And so by doing that, you wouldn't necessarily know that these started from the same starting point because they do look more distinctive. You can even go ahead and rescale this. You could warp it if you wanted to change some of the perspective a bit, or you can use distort. So a lot of ways to make this unique. All right, now from here, I'm going to merge everything together and then I'm going to decrease the layer opacity and add a new layer to draw my final line work on. For the line work, you can use any brush you want. I am going to be using a brush from my watercolor and ink pack. Depending on the art style that you're doing, you can absolutely skip this part. It's definitely determined by the type of art that you're doing. So if you're doing something without outlines, you can treat the initial flowers as your sketch layer and move on from there. But if you want to sketch over the top, this can be a good time to make some tweaks and changes to the flowers, whether that's adding folds or curled edges or just changing the petal shape. I really like to do this tracing sketching step because it's when I can personalize and make the flowers more unique. You can add or leave out as many details from the original brush stamps as you want.
All right, now that I'm done with the tracing, I'm gonna hide my original layer. And for the center of the flowers, let's do a couple different styles. Here, I am just drawing lots of little curves to create these bumps. A lot of these little U shapes, all in the same direction. And then on this second one, I'm gonna draw a bunch of little circles clustered tightly together. I like this because it's super simple, but by the time it's finished, it looks really detailed and it's not a lot of work to do so. So here is the final line work. Now I'm gonna speed this up, but for the final step, I'm gonna fill in these with some watercolor. Again, I'm using brushes from my watercolor and ink pack. I'll be doing videos on how to use those in the future, so I'm not gonna run through the specifics of this, but here is a quick time-lapse of it. And this is the finished piece. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped you out. Hopefully you learned something. If you want to check out more details about this brush pack, you can follow the link in the description below. I'll also link the watercolor and ink pack if you're interested in seeing that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.